Hello viewers, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to inspect or test uh, load carrying ball joints. We can determine that these are load carrying ball joints by looking at the spring first of all and paying attention to where the spring transfers the weight of the vehicle which comes down through the strut and comes down to the lower control arm. Therefore, the lower control arm has a ball joint in it which is carrying the weight of the vehicle. We have removed the wheel so it's easier to see the components and easier to see the setup of the gauges. But what we want to do is we want to unload the suspension system and unload the ball joint so that we can properly test it. As you can see here, the hoist has been set up so that it's lifting the vehicle directly underneath the spring on the control arm and that will allow us to take the weight off of the ball joint so that any play can be determined without the weight pressing down on it. To measure the ball joint play we're going to use a dial gauge which will measure in the thousandths of an inch as well as the mounting equipment that will mount the dial gauge to the ball joint for testing. To mount the dial gauge, we have to locate somewhere on the suspension system to connect the mounting tools and clamp them into place. And this gooseneck will hold the gauge on somewhere on the spindle, which will allow us to take a measurement of the ball joint. It takes a little bit of practice to connect this, but once you get it, it becomes fairly simple. We're going to lock the gauge in place. And I'm going to have to put the wheel back on to do this measurement. So keep in mind that the gauge cannot come in contact with the wheel. Now with the wheel on, we can see how much room we have to put the gauge in. And you can see that I have the wheel slightly elevated off of the drive on ramp. What I want to do now is I want to place the pry bar underneath the tire and I'm going to lightly push up and see if there's any movement between the ball joint and the knuckle. With the pry bar underneath the tire, just a little push upwards and release. And this will indicate how much movement there is between the ball and socket of the ball joint. And right now it looks like we have about three thousandths of an inch, four thousandths of an inch movement in one direction and it returns back to the original position which was 50. You don't necessarily have to zero the gauge, you just have to count how many uh, thousandths of an inch that needle deflects. Since this is an up and down movement, this is considered axial play because we're moving the ball joint in the direction of its axis. Now we have to test the ball joint for radial play, which requires me repositioning the dial indicator. Dial indicator has been repositioned so it measures sideways instead of up and down. And now we're going to push up on the pry bar and wiggle the tire left and right and watch how much movement there is on the needle. Very little movement right now, probably about a thousandth of an inch either way, so two thousandths of an inch total. We would take those numbers that we measured and we would compare them with the specifications and see if they're within specifications for allowable play, both axial, up and down, and radial side to side. Now that we've taken some measurements of the load carrying ball joint, what do we do with the other ball joint that an SLA system has? Follower ball joint up at the top, no weight on it, so obviously it just follows along. It's considered a follower or a friction follower. How do we test it? We don't need to measure it, because all we're looking for is visual play. So we need someone to grab the tire up at the top, push in and out, watch for movement, and we'll need a second person inside having a look to see if they can spot that movement. All right, I'm going to use the viewer as my assistant here, and I want you to watch the upper ball joint right there. And let me know if you see any movement at that upper ball joint when I push in on the wheel. Do you see any movement? It doesn't look like there's very much movement, so we're going to say that that ball joint passes inspection because it requires visible movement or visible play to be deemed effective. Follower ball joints tend to have radial play, so that's why we were pushing in and out on it. 
see if the ball joint would move sideways. It didn't have any visible play, so this ball joint is good to go. Thanks for your help. So just to give viewers an example of what it would look like if you had ball joint play, this could also pertain to wheel bearing play. When you grab the wheel to shake it, there's going to be movement, and then we need someone to determine where the movement is coming from. This check also works well to check steering components. Now, I'm simulating it. The wheel is loose, but you get the idea. You will hear a knocking noise. And also for checking follower ball joints down at the bottom, if you have a different type of suspension system like McPherson, shaking the wheel will give me an indication that something is loose, and we would need someone on the other side to check it and tell us what it is. Thank you, everybody.